Hey folks, so we're back here with Mike. Hi Mike. Hi Barn. How are you doing? You alright? I'm alright, yeah. Great. I've got the workshop looking tidier than it ever has done before. It is tidy, yeah. And so we're here for Lamas. I can't say the Irish version. Yeah. Lucas Ars and... Uh, I wouldn't know about that. Um, but uh, in our kind of eight part series, we're uh -huh. on part five, I think. Oh my God. We're coming so, towards the end already, Barn. Well, it's it's interesting because we're definitely past halfway. We are past halfway. And yeah. um, technically, Lamas is the kind of start of the harvest season. Yeah. And really, I guess, peak summer, peak heat. Yeah. And ironically, today it's quite cloudy, but we've just had um, a massive heat wave. We have. Um, I don't think we'll go on too much about Lamas, but I guess um, we promised last time that we we're going to talk about contraptions. And to a certain extent, that is really like Mike's harvest after all these ha years hard work. I, sp I suppose, yeah, hard work. Do you feel I like you're, you're past your peak and you're now ready for harvesting? I felt my peak <laughs> was about 10 years ago, just, just after you left. <laughs> <laughs> is that my fault? Is no. that your fault? No, you got me there. You oh, got right. me there. You got Great. me there. And then Tom Dillon took over. And yeah. then I, that's when I came he out with the book. He ripened you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's been on a steadily sort of downhill trajectory. And then I wrote my obituary for Nick Gibbs for my 70th birthday. Oh, great. Uh, which he had to reword because I didn't die. <laughs> oh. uh, and I've got through that that's now. But nice. I tell you, 70th, I've probably I've said this one. before, I don't know. 70th birthday, that's really difficult. I yeah, thought 40 was difficult. No, forget 40, forget 50 being the new 40, 70 is, is bad news. One. But I'm through it now, and I was going to retire next year, and what we were going to be doing in a month or so's time was going to be the grand finale. Right. But um, now I'm looking at courses for next year now, and we've got new ideas constantly going. We've got bent spindles in Ooh. the back of the chair, which have slowly crept in if I'm sitting it. This this one is what partly what sparked it. Sorry, I don't mean to obscure you. Don't but uh, we, we, we that oak wasn't up to steam bending, so I took a natural curve there mm. and had round tenons top and bottom. And uh, they don't move. I thought if they're round... Well, they'd spin. They'd spin around, but they don't. They stay put. So we had just had four steam bent back spindles on the last course yeah. and that's the way forward never more so sit back down so the camera can sit, see you. sit back down so the camera <laughs> can see me sorry you've gone completely off on a tangent i've gone off on a um, tangent we're not supposed to be talking about but this we can talk we can talk about spindles another time but also just whilst i'm thinking about it why would it matter if they move could that not be a design feature no because then it would fit your back perfectly it would no? but if they were to move they'd probably just flop all around the back so yeah. they didn't have to do any work Anyway, such is the nature of spindles. It is spindles are a nightmare. <laughs> I, I actually much prefer lats, but this this yeah. takes us on. Yeah. I mean, and don't take this personally, but I've always seen the spindles as a way to um, make it easier for people coming on a class. Yeah. Because you just exactly. drill a straight hole exactly. rather than having to do your um, square mortises or you know longer three mortises. little holes next to each other. Yeah. So, th I mean, that will take us brilliantly um, on in a moment to the contraptions, mm. which I think I actually hadn't really thought through quite how great a video this could be. And um, <laughs> I think we're even going to probably extend in our next video to talk more about other contraptions. Yeah. Um, can we just give a quick um, brief overview, really, of what contraptions one might need for chair making? Well, when you talked about contraptions, I thought, OK, pole lay, shaving horse, cleaving brake. Yeah. What other contraptions do I have? And then when I was working in tidy, getting this workshop looking so immaculate for you to arrive. Yeah. I wrote a list of every contraption <coughs> I came across and I filled out a big A4 sheet. Yes. And so lots, of, lot. lots of them are lovely little things which have come from people on the courses. A few of them, one or two came from one. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> is is the rocking bits for the for the steam bending jig which i saw actually referenced in an american chair making book and they actually credited me 
It's the oh, first really? time I've actually seen me be credited, but I can't remember which book and which it's American nice chair maker. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so can I give what I think might be a brief overview in terms of like, if you're starting <coughs> with a log, you might have a contraption for holding your log for sawing. Yeah, forgot about that. You're then going to cleave. So obviously we're not talking about tools, but you'd be using things like axes and froes, but with a fro you'd use your cleaving break. Yeah. Then you've got your shaving horse, pole lathe, pole lathe for turning things, for making tenons, and other ways of making tenons. Yeah. We've then got contraptions for steam bending. Yeah. Contraptions for um, forming after they've been steam bent. So we've got the steamers and then the, the formers, benders. Yeah, well, I've kind of put those together. Well, I suppose, yeah, you've got your thing to generate the steam and, and get them pliable, and then you put them. That was because I was just looking through my scrapbook last night, back, yeah. back in the days, 2008 to 10. Lots of pictures of Barn Carter, this, this young chap who was thinking of getting into green woodwork. Yeah. And uh, in fact, I've reinvented some of the stuff that we were talking about and doing then the big one of the biggest breakthroughs is lifting it two inches clear of the bench so you can then get a clamp in underneath hold it down we were clamping everything onto the bench we'd clamp it onto the bench for bending legs for bending anything, anything and yeah. bat laughs yeah and then we'd have a cup of tea and then we'd take it off yeah. and put it into a setting jig yeah setting jigs are a thing of the past if you're running courses for four people and if you've got two dozen cramps clamps then uh, everything has a clamp and I've also got room in the box to put the clamps as well. So we have our bending setting Sorry. sometimes yeah. uh, and then we need ways of clamping stuff down so that we can do mortises so that would be for drilling yeah. and then drilling jigs, drilling marking rig. jigs uh, yeah. and then things <coughs> for squeezing components squeezing stuff together. together. Sash clamps, cups, yeah and then possibly something for finishing. But that's, that's our kind of general overview. Yeah. I think in our next video, we may look in a bit more detail at some of those bigger ideas. Mm. But I think what would be quite cool now is maybe um, we'll have a quick look at the garden and then see some of the contraptions on your list that, um, yeah, we'll just pick some out at random. Mm, okay, and we'll then, do that. Um, in the next session, we can maybe look a bit more at like steam bending, shave horse design, how to do tenons, how to do mortises, that kind of stuff. Okie doke, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Right. Ah. Oh. So it, here's a good old garden. I can't remember quite st what state it was in last time, but that sweet corn has just blossomed. It's wonderful. I'm really enjoying that because we haven't grown that for years and years. So. And it's so those little flowers then? Is that what I mean? They see, they're putting out the little, yeah. the little things, and then they'll put out the little dangly things for the pollen to fly off there. So, uh, yeah, I don't know when what will happen. But in the background are the runner beans, and they're flowering away like mad. But at this point, they don't seem to set any beans. Okay. So I don't know why it takes them a while to get steam up. Whereas the climbing French beans, which I've got over there, yeah, they they've got. We've already had seven beans off them, and we got oh, more great. to pick today. Which we can pick some more today. <laughs> That's going like. to be almost a meal. <laughs> Not to mention the purple monge too down at the bottom garden near the house, where we can keep an eye on it. Oh, make okay. Sure it behaves. And what about um, your carrots? The carrots were getting well through. The carrots were eating half a pound of carrots. And they, can they day. just stay in there for a while? Not after we've eaten them. <laughs> no, but do you know, like, how long? Because, like, some things you need to pick fairly quickly. Yeah. Like a strawberry. Like but a carrot, sweet. you could just leave in the mud for a little Probably. while. Probably, yeah. We've got flying ants in there as well. Whether they're doing anything to them, I don't know. Mm. One or two carrots have got strange things. But, no, they're, they're, I'm really pleased. I mean, the bath, uh, when we talk about contraptions. Yeah. Baths. Baths are where it's at. Baths or baths, depending, you know. Oh, well, that's the other contraption for keeping logs wet anyway. Yes, yeah, yeah. For, which are in full use at the moment. Yeah, using my riparian rights <laughs> to, <laughs> to extract water from the stream. There. Well, as long as it's reasonable. <laughs> within, within reason. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't be unreasonable. No, you can't. Good. Well, so um, <laughs> let's, let's have a look at a contraption. We'll, yeah. we'll go and okay. grab your list and uh, we'll, we'll talk I've through noticed it. when... We were stood around earlier. Yeah. My favourite contraption is just behind us. Oh, what over is Over my shoulder is the 
that it's got a new <laughs> place for holding it. Not this stuff still. Afraid so. <laughs> so this is the wonderful little contraption for measuring the golden ratio when wanting to split a piece of wood tangentially, which is usually when we've got down to about an eighth of a log. So that was, it was a whole log, then a half log, then a quarter, now an eighth. Then we want to split it this way. And deciding where to go, uh, it wants to be the golden ratio. And uh, this is available on the internet as a golden ratio caliper, I think. And that tells you where to where to cleave it. And so, how did you discover this golden ratio? Uh, one of my regular course participants, an amazing guy called Jeff, presented me this after he'd been on a course or two. He came up with this thing, which is a beautiful, made in New Zealand version. Um, and I couldn't possibly use anything so beautiful that flies completely in the face of our whole ethos doesn't it if it's beautiful use it yeah i mean to be honest it's an interesting thing because workshops are shared spaces and it can be tricky with precious things especially if they have sentimental value um so i've often tended towards having stuff that i'm not too precious about in a workshop so i can understand you wanting that safe so um let's have a look at you splitting it and could you i mean do you have an explanation why the golden ratio works i guess Normally I tell people they want the same volume of wood either side of the split. but I don't think it's quite the same volume. I mean, this doesn't count because I just got this bit out of the woodshed so it's dry. But it, it, I'm sure, it, so this can't help but split straight. So if you pass me a frame, yeah. we'll find out the, uh, the wisdom of my... I suppose it's also a bit like, um, what are those metal things they use for buildings that are kind of a certain cross section like I or, or T? What are those called? You, do you know what I mean? Like like an iron girder or whatever, yeah. and it might be like an eye section. Yeah. And and it's because of the 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 depth has more impact than the width, doesn't it? So when you've got that triangular shape, that long section there stiffens <laughs> that side more than if it was the same volume but shorter and wider. Yeah, I so see that's what you're getting what, at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, golden ratio. Golden ratio happens to work. That that's if you go back to when I was writing green woodwork back in '89, I was struggling with this so somewhere between halfway and a quarter of the way. Yeah. And it just happened. Someone said that looks like the golden ratio, and we tried it, and it works. Great. How and why? It's just one of these cosmic things, man. Cosmic. Uh, you know. Just we'll go and split that. Let's I mean, do it. It doesn't then. really count for anything. Poor does little it, piece of wood has been <laughs> waiting to be split. Is that ash? <laughs> Very yellow. It is because it's been sunbathing for the last month. Whoa. Oof. That couldn't help but run straight, really. Oh, it did run off a little bit, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows what a lot of hot air I took. <laughs> there we go. It's amazing the sound dry wood makes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's golden ratios. That's golden ratios. I'll put it back. In its little place. And um, we'll go and go and have a look at your list and get on the next contraption. <laughs> Come on then. Okay, I mean, God knows what, what Mike's up to, but... Uh... <laughs> I'm experiencing the push forces. Everyone knows about the pull forces on magnets, but I want, to <laughs> I want to be able to demonstrate. The push is just a wonderful... Th it's such a philosophical point that and it's this is all i do this every morning i do my tai chi exercises and you get that same that same thing which you can't see but you can feel great I mean, how cosmic is that but it's cosmic <laughs> um in but case anyway, you don't understand mike's pair. playing with magnets <laughs> <laughs> cameras that way <laughs> cameras that way <laughs> sorry phones that way yeah. so a pair of cups which uh this was my i was saying a lot of these contraptions are thrown at me from people, friends, or people who've been on courses. Yes. And this is John, wonderful guy, John. He's the guy who in, installed the uh, the drying unit, which we'll see at some point or other. We may have seen it already. I can't remember now. Um, but uh, yeah, 
so they just hold on there brilliant and then if you want to grip a piece of wood because in my day it was a bit of old flannel and some um, gaffer tape <laughs> was wrapped round round that yeah, go on wind that in and so bro. so a large part of this is really just to protect the wood isn't it and it's i guess also yeah. to direct w where it's been squished if yeah. i squeeze that keep squeezing that yeah. oh and yeah these the these are then weaker wood than that so the if anything is going to give then it's these little sort of things and th this is used mainly um when we're squeezing something together so we would have um you know we'd have a piece of wood being pushed tight into there sure and is they've it? seen mini clip of that in the previous video right is so that right yeah we'll do more detail of that um in the next one but it's a it's an interesting thing so essentially um your chairs uh, of recent times yeah. well they've always been round haven't they round bits round bits, squishing together round yeah. bits squishing together yeah um, uh, but the, i mean all of these little contraptions as you call them they've all they've all got a whole story behind them that that yeah yeah we've been through velcro we've been through all, all sorts of stuff and it could be that there's there's further to go with it and yeah. so well certainly in my day um these were used right and this would have been used for things like the steam bending and also yeah. just for clamping down on yeah yeah um, and for supporting when we're drilling legs we've got yes we've got an updated version of this for that yeah so we'll but these little magnets have crept in everywhere we've got little magnets uh, crawling all over the place brilliant <laughs> you can't and can't and how them. are these created they're just soft wood you've drilled a <laughs> hole and cut them in half drill an eight mil oh these uh yeah a 50 mil forcing a bit and a drill press so yeah straight and then cut them in half and they're used all over the place these little cups or bridges i tend to call that a bridge but when they're individual they're they're a cup and these bits of wood here these this are just the same level as that plump, is it? Out rig yeah. <laughs> well again for years you it's probably back in your day yeah. yeah if i wanted when we were using the tenon cutters with a little spirit level in it oh yeah you want something there that's horizontal so i'd have to get this bit of wood exactly the same height as that which you know could given the state of my bench and things was a, it was a bit of a, a do and then I think it was summer before last, this guy says, well, you've got two of them. Why not just have one on either side? These have both been through the planar thickness of together. Yeah. And then I've got something that's, so long as the bench is horizontal, I've got something that's bang on. So we now use two of them. And it's little things like that, you know, just sort of make life that little bit easier. It's a bit like the British cycle team, you know, it's all, it's all incremental. It's little tiny one bits. 1%. And 1%, yeah. but you put them all together. And you've got a hundred percent there you go <laughs> well and i think so it's we were going to look at we were going to look at david's yes come on then peg maker and this is you know th this is not unique to david but he's a plumber and he's good with materials so i just had two bits of wood here but he's got not only has he got two bits of metal there but he's got a bit of rubber here so we uh we get our sliver of walnut which incidentally that's why i'm going to be running courses next year because i thought this was all the walnut i had left for making pegs and wedges and then i discovered this so you know get through about a length each year so we'd be, be you know got oh, another, great. Th another three years of courses hidden within that a and length I, in a I year that's surely walnut. not enough well it's, it's, it's amazing what you can get out of something like that now you're, you in know, your if you're looking at six <laughs> yeah six mil by six mil there's a lot of six mil by six in there yeah yeah six but mil okay six mil pegs I'm, I was making four and a half. I, was, I know it was four and a half in your day because it's and walnut and not to, oak. And it then snaps. it went up to five and a half mil going into a six mil hole. And then someone had the audacious idea of actually making it six mil square and banging it into a six mil hole. And it worked and everything didn't fall apart. And the, yeah. so we're now. At, and is I that all people, based on walnut? Because walnut compresses more than the oak does. It could be actually. Yeah. Yeah, someone, again, a little random comment. I can't even remember who to credit this one to, but someone said. If you want the best pegs and wedges holding bits of wood together, you want some walnut. Really? I just happened to have this left over from a job which I did once upon a time. Yeah. And well, there uh, we go. Well, come on then. Let's so see how it works. Let's see how it works. So uh, I have, using my vernier caliper, got this. So you so that's split about, a little plank. It's about, it's a bit more than six mil. Well, it's not much more than six mil that way. And that's about, that's a lot more than 12 mil that way. So we then go down there and yeah this is a little safety open l knife which for some reason <laughs> tamsin gave to me 
Yeah, I mean, anything would work for this. You'd be able to do that. Anything, with a bit yeah. You know, cut metal knife, thing probably. hit with a piece of wood. You get, you can put either one or two of them. I'll just do one at a time. And then you pull a sharp chisel. Sharp chisel. I've enjoyed Oof. sharpening things recently as well. And then uh, go up against that, that little bungee bit there. Flip it around. And this is where the Tai Chi comes in again. Again, all the power is coming off the right leg. And then flip that round. Another half turn. I very much doubt this is how mass-produced chair pegs are, are made. But um, it's a nice process in my little workshop. And then now we can sit that carefully down there so it doesn't get blunt. Here come the gauge. Six and a bit. Oh, five point, five point eight. So that's that's the size I would aim for. But you can see it's a little bit off square yet. Great. And then, uh, and I suppose this this enables people that haven't necessarily got some fine, finely honed hand skills to be able to get. Something that does need to be pretty much spot on, right? For it to it kind of yeah. fill the hole nicely and not split the leg or be so difficult to bang in that it snaps. Yeah. Because in my yeah, day, I used to be on the, on, you know, towards the end of the course, I'd be frantically making these four and a half mil square oak pegs. Yeah. Which you had a bunch of old laths. <laughs> from somewhere yeah that were in the dry box and yeah. i'd be turning them into like beautifully tapered little five uh, four and a half mil square pegs yeah well so this you've, you've learned to cope without me basically I've, I, I have <laughs> and we've we've moved on you know yeah. yeah and now jeff's latest thing was having drilled your six mil holes we then come along with a little five and a half mil chisel and come in and make it so you can put them in diamond wise because I always used to say, you know, if you're putting that into a leg, it has to come, you know, it can't, it can't go out that way because that's much more than six mil and you're liable to split the piece of wood. Yes. But if you go in the little holes, again, we'll show so them So you're that. making it square, square hole. So you're making it a square hole. You're actually making a square hole for a square peg to go in, which really? flies in the face of the whole object. What a hassle. Square pegging around. Oh, it's a big hassle, but that's, that's so you can pose. Yes. Because so, this is... Yeah, when that's the lovely thing about this walnut, once it's all oiled, that's nice. You've got your chair and people can sit in it. Mm. But what will draw their eye is this, is this peg, and this this has come from craftsmen of the Cumberlands, Chester Cornet, who yeah, do everything put with an axe. Two, two whittle, he'd, he'd do a seven slat ladder back with two pegs in each. Fourteen, yeah. Give it to President Nixon. But you, um, on your chairs, you rely on the oval tenons, but that would just be for holding like the crest yeah. into the top <coughs> of the back legs. Yeah. So you just have two at the top. Just have two pegs, yeah. 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 Cool, so um, one last thing then, we'll have a little chat about the um, bending jig for the crest, just because it's here and you mentioned it earlier. And then um, Mike's written a blooming massive list and this video is already too long. So, uh, but we are coming back. And I know you're coming back. We'll go through a lot more contraptions. Yeah. yeah. And we'll be actually making things. That's the thing. Yeah. Talking about contraptions without making things, I'm afraid, is, no. is like... No, I think it's good. I think we've done the golden ratio. We've done David's peg contraption jig. We've done magnetic John's cups. magnets. Yeah. We um, haven't done digger's depth stops. We'll no. do those. We'll do those. Yeah, we'll do the depth stops another time. <laughs> so, what, what's this malarkey? This is for your crest. That's a lump of wood. That's a former, which when I first came into this, you'd have a big lump of wood and somebody would saw through that with a band saw and you'd have that bit there and you'd have the other bit there and you'd put your piece of wood in between and hey presto. But if you're a chair bodger as yeah, I was so in the, those days. So the kind of the female part would just be from the same square bit. That's so right. it'd just be one yeah, saw the other yeah. Half, yeah. But I didn't have big band saws, so <laughs> I would shape this with a chainsaw and a plane and axes and all sorts of things. And then this bit here, uh, I would actually t find an ash tree the right size and turn it on the lathe so that it was just really nice and smooth. And I had a really complicated way of holding it on there as well. But now you just go down to, well, in fact, uh, I've found, found a piece of fence post lying around 
and then cut a uh, 10 centimetre length off that, put a bit of bungee cord through there, one at each end, and then the bang, then your stuff goes in the middle. And the yeah. nice thing about that is that as it's being squeezed in, that rocks around and it's less likely to, to break out at the back when okay. you're bending it. Nice. So what was the complicated way that you used to attach it? Oh, goodness, you have to look in the old books for that. Yeah. Uh, we had bits that of cord living going wood or through green the woodwork? <laughs> living wood. Living wood, probably, yeah. A piece of cord coming through there and countersunk little knots. It's amazing how complicated things are. And when we come to look at this thing here, I spent two d whole days working on the last bending jig, and we'll see that one well, spindle bending jig for bending spindles. spindles. Yeah. Uh, you'll be able to see that in action as well. I still need convincing on the spindles. So this um, this would just go in your sash cramp. Yeah, on the outriggers. On the outriggers. I, you definitely didn't have outriggers in my day. No, no, that's thanks to... Uh, I've forgotten the name of the guy now. It goes there like that. And you haven't gone for these... Um, I've seen people using car jacks for this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh we, no, you did have a car jack. We did, for yeah, a that, while, was, didn't that, you? Was yeah. Leo, that was Leo made me a couple of beautiful things with yeah. his car jacks. But uh, they, they crumpled, the car jacks crumpled. They might Do be able they? to lift a, a lorry up off the ground, but they're not capable of so look, squeezing stuff together. Is this going to work on paper? I've never tried bending a piece <laughs> of paper using Should that. be easy. <laughs> it's had an hour in the steamer, so. <laughs> Ta -da. Ta da. And it's bent. Uh, look at that. But Who yeah, would well have thought that you could bend a piece of paper using kit like that? No, no, it's magic. <laughs> and so simple. Um, so, there we go. A little overview of some of Mike's contraptions. <laughs> and, um, you know, we've got a whole workshop of bits and bobs to help level legs and for weaving, needles for weaving, things for holding your cord on so many different things we're gonna have to we can't do all of them we're not gonna be able to have time to do all of them but we'll pick the best ones we'll and the best um, we'll share with them next time next time folks yeah so um yeah see you on the next video and thanks for having us again it's been a great pleasure Bart. yeah and i see you.